Hey everyone, let's build up this resin camphor. New Type is a fast and reliable source of Gunpla paints and tools shipped internationally. Purchasing with my affiliate link newtype.us slash frostysnow also helps support me with a small commission. Here is an SD resin camphor. I actually started it up a long time ago and finally got back on it recently. Gonna do a parts check now. The most common questions I'm asked in any resin gunpla build and paint video is number one, what tools I use, and number two, where I bought my kit. So let's talk about that first. First, almost all my tools are shown and labeled in my how to build resin gunpla kits video, which you can see by clicking on the link above. This is an example of a really easy magnet job. A magnet will be enough to hold such a light piece. And I've made them a bit loose on purpose. I've had to drill through this part just because there's not enough room for the magnet to go in otherwise. While I use the magnet for this one, because there's a lot less surface area you see here to put the glue on and I'm just afraid that it might fall out. And I don't want to put too much glue in here and it might seep through and you can kind of see it on the edge. So I did magnetize this one, but for this, because there is so much depth in here to put the glue in, and I think it'll stick quite well. Same for this. The peg is quite long and the um, hole here is quite deep. So I'm just going to glue these during final assembly and I'm not going to use any magnets or wires. And got the other side in place. Another common question I get is where do we buy our resin kits? Cookie buys almost all of our kits through a local Korean secondhand exchange website. For those overseas, do take a look at New Type's selection of resin kits. They are always stocking new releases, restocking old kits, and have a range of resin brands to check out. Using my affiliate link newtype.us slash frostysnow also really helps to support this channel. For example, these SAB panel liners that I use are available for purchase from Newtype. You can also check out a very in-depth review video I did on these liners. Notice that when I panel line, I always only move my part, not my liner. The liner always goes in the same direction. This helps with preventing slips. I'm going to re-drill these holes because they're not very deep. Okay, so I think that looks way better after the drilling. The hands are really messy, especially between the fingers, so... Notice that I also have my pinky finger on the part to stabilize my lining hand. Panel lining helps create deeper lines that your panel line accent can flow easily into. Okay, so the both of them are pretty much finished. A little bit of sanding, clean it up. I've also been applying red putty to the spots that need a little bit of filling, but I've forgotten to film. And they, these have been sanded and cleaned up already. Dental cleansing palettes. I'll leave it overnight. For this kit, I decided to do the cleanup work before painting surfacer. There is pros and cons to how you order your cleanup process. Experiment to see what works for you. 
After sanding, I can see there are some parts that I missed. It's hard to really do too much about the stuff in here. I did already go over it with a panel liner. It's still a bit rough, so I might do a little more or I might just have to leave it. These parts I re-scribed uh, a bit. It still looks quite rough in here, so I'm gonna redo that. Mostly in the crevices that are harder to reach with a sanding stick or sponge. So I'm going to be using sandpaper. So I'll be giving these a second round of sanding. Notice that different sanding tools help me get to different surfaces and nooks and crannies. Okay, I think this one part literally took me 25 minutes. It's got so many little corners and crevices. But um, I think this is about how I'm gonna leave it. Oh, look at all these crevices I had to sand. Crazy. Still, having a clean surface is really important to me, especially in a candy paint job. Here, I use red putty to fill in small cracks and holes. Sanding these kinds of crevices are such a pain, but it's a really visible part. Look at how messy it is inside the hand. Second round of sanding done. This took forever. Because this is an old recast kit, it really required a lot of cleanup, as you hear me complain throughout. I'm gonna paint up the frame first. Usually I would do the candy paint first because there's so many layers, but I gotta do some masking with this before I do the candy paint, so frame first. Planning color separation is essential when painting a full resin kit because the parts can't be separated like a Bandai kit. I think these are gonna be my main colors. There's going to be a few other ones, but uh, that's the main ones. And I tried a lot of testing of the candy color, and I think I'm going to go with this. I'd like to talk about how I choose colors and decide paint schemes. I've painted all of my SD resin kits before in matte, mostly subdued colors with a few metallic details. One of them is my SD Resin Gesta, which you can see on my channel. They have a little more realistic, anime-like, and original feel to them. However, I planned for this to be in candy paint with a urethane, very glossy top coat. I imagine kits like these to look more like racing cars. Very flashy, lots of pop-out details, and a little more futuristic. That's also why I don't personally add panel line accent to the panel lines, which a lot of people asked in previous videos why I didn't do for candy paint. Panel line accent, to me, gives off a more realistic and used over time look. However, with my candy urethane paint job, I wanted an out of factory, brand new racing car look. However, there are all kinds of candy paint styles with shading or matte top coat, so of course, it's up to you. I used the Odenkan light blue in between the Odenkan blue for some extra layers because I like that thick, deep candy color look, but didn't want the blue to get too dark because the Odenkan blue is quite pigmented. I think I painted blue, blue, light blue, blue. So four layers. I prefer bright and deep candy colors and usually use at least four layers to get that depth, but not too many layers before it gets too dark. That is of course a personal preference as well. Enamel hand painting is really about knowing what tools will work with what parts. For example, I know that these really deep crevices will work well with a toothpick. Using a paintbrush can smudge the edge of the crevices and are also a bit of work to clean. 
I painted these deep crevices about three to four times, let them dry completely before cleaning it up. With flat, very small details that need a lot of precision, paint brushes often work better. Notice that with hand painting also, I have my pinky finger on the part to help stabilize my painting hand. I always try to clean up before painting. I use a matte top coat even over my metallics because I wanted the focus to be on my glossy candy paint outer armor. I have a little piece of wet tissue here, a masking tape that I just rolled up and an old fluffy brush. And of course, I can use my airbrush and kind of blow off any dust. And I want to do this before I start painting because I find once paint is in here, it will spray out a little bit of paint even if you don't pull back the trigger. And it kind of makes the dust stick on the part. So I want to have all this done before I start painting. And because I'm working with urethane, I don't want to have too much time like cleaning each part and then paint, cleaning a part and then paint. I want to have it all done already and I'll just spray without having to worry too much about cleaning. And I'm just going to dab it off to get the static off the brush because it's winter now in Korea and it gets really dry. And no matter what I do, the dust is just going to stick back onto the part. And then there might be some dust on the tissue and I just get it off with the tape, then wipe down my part. And there is always little bits of residue, especially after you do decal. And I really literally just use my fingernails to see if I can get it off. Some of the stuff you can't get off and you just have to live with it. There's fingerprints on here and you can really just wipe that off literally with your fingers. I know I'm wiping off fingerprints with my finger, but if you wipe, it generally doesn't leave a print. And I can see if there are fingerprints or not. There's lots of little residue too from the masking tape uh, because this part was really heavily masked. And masking tape isn't supposed to leave any residue, but it does sometimes. If I need, I just go back and I keep using that tape. So that's how I get my part clean before I do the final coat. I don't do this for everything. It's only because this is going to be a urethane top coat, so. I know some people use weights to mix urethane paint. I found that you don't need to be that precise down to the hair with the mixing ratio. So I just used a dropper and a bottle with measurements and mostly eyeballed it. This is around 5cc of the multi-clear. 0.5 for the hardener. Of course, follow your own paint bottle instructions. I chose to go on the heavier side with the thinner ratio. The bottle recommended 30 to 70% thinner, and I went with around 60% ratio. There's also a lot of people who recommend changing compressor pressure, airbrush needle width, or going full blast with urethane painting. I personally never change my compressor PSI. It's always on between 25 to 30 because I'm used to painting at Gunpla Studios where we share the compressor and people don't commonly change it. I also only own one 0.3 airbrush. I did paint with a stronger blast than usual, but I found full blast gave me a little bit of pooling of course, this is all dependent on the paint ratios and the tools you use. I did, however, make absolutely sure, number one, wear a mask, proper respirator. Number two, don't let your paint sit in your airbrush for too long. It can harden up unlike lacquer paint and you'll get a blocked airbrush. Number three, 
take your airbrush apart and deep clean it in between sittings. And I even put it through the Sonic cleaner after I was totally done. All right, now we get to the final assembly. I actually recorded my entire final assembly process and will have a build with me video where you can see more of how I put a kit together after painting in real time. The video was already made available on my Patreon for early and ad free access. I try to include extra perks and group projects like these for my patrons as their support really helps sustain this channel and helps me continue making these videos for you guys. The build with me video with a nearly 30 minute commentary voiceover will be available to everyone in the near future. So make sure you stay tuned for it. Hello, Cookie. Hmm? Hello. Hello. We're going to um, a Chinese restaurant today. It's a pretty good one. We've been there before. You like Chinese food, Cookie? Uh, Chinese food, very like. What's your favorite Chinese food? I like better jampong. Oh yeah, that's a spicy soup yeah. noodle. Yeah. Okay. Wow, 이제 얼굴 좀 많이 부은 것 같아 내가. We're waiting to go into the restaurant and Cookie is just gonna take a rest. Why are you taking a rest, Cookie? I take a vaccine yeah. to yesterday. Oh, I'm how so tired today. Yeah, is it your first or second vaccine? Uh, second vaccine. Okay, so you take a rest and I'm gonna go walk around, okay? Yeah. It's uh, kind of countryside here, but it's quite interesting. There's the restaurant. And here's the restaurant. That's where we're gonna eat at. It's so advanced in Korea, no one serves you. You just put your phone number into the machine and then you get told how long you have to wait or what number you are on the app. So we're number two. I think uh, you, Chin you like Chinese food than Korean food, right? Yes. Mm. I know. Because I'm Chinese. But 
I'm Korean man, okay? Yeah. Korean person. What's your favorite Korean food? Everything. Everything? But I better like kimchi. Oh, kimchi. It's traditional man, okay? I really love this. It's um, deep fried pork. And I always order it with the sauce on the side. Very fresh. The crispy? Sauce is very crispy. Yeah. Sauce is if the sauce was hotter, it would be better. Oh my god. Hot <laughs> What is it? Uh, this is Royal America tea. Mm -hmm. Second, black sugar bubble tea. It's not sweet. It's not sweet. I like not sweet. Cookie's gonna go pick up some coffee for us mm -hmm. before we watch our movie. I'm not feeling very well, so I'm sending him off to do it. I will take a cup coffee. Okay, thank you. Da -da -da. Now for movie time. I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters who allow me to build, paint, and produce videos while not having to worry about making a living at the same time. Patreon is a way for anyone to support their favorite creator and content. You can also join us on Discord to chat with me and fellow Gumpla hobbyists. Check it out at patreon.com slash frostedsnow. Thanks for watching!